Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is good. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving and into the courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Shall we pray? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou preparest a place, a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thy anointest my head, anointeth my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, continue to bless us, continue to keep us Continue to walk with us as we move through these difficult times, particularly here in Detroit and around the world. Amen. Our announcements. All in-person services here at Second Baptist are now on hold. We remain hopeful to open once we are certain it is safe to do so. We are saddened to learn of the passing of our dear sister, Pat Brooks one of our assistant clerks, and a member of our health ministry team. We want the family to know that they have our sincere condolences and they are in our prayers. Continue to lift in prayer the family of Gertrude and Thomas May Sr. as they both were funeralized this past week. 
Continue to lift up in prayer our sick and shut-in members and reach out to a member you know who lives alone and can use a call from a fellow church member. Even though we are not communing together, we hope you will still remember to send your offerings and tithes to the church. You can do this online by visiting our website at www.secondbaptist.org and click the online giving link. This will take you to PayPal where you can select and send your gift to the church. You can also use Cash App. And finally, you can mail your offering into the church at 411 or 441 Monroe, Detroit, Michigan, 48226. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We'll bless those who have the, the, the resources to give that did not, but we thank you for those who had the resources to give and gave. Lord, we that you continue to bless us, to continue to keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The sermon scripture for today is taken from the book of Matthew, found in chapter 28, verses 1 through 20. And it reads, <clears throat> In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his remnant white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and, be, and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth from you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher where with fear and great joy. And did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now, when they were going... Behold, some of that watch came unto the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while they slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. Amen. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this worship experience. We thank you, O God, in heaven for the Church of God, which uh, is not just a building, but it's an aggregate of believers in Jesus Christ uh, who believe in the Lord and who've been saved and who are bound by the Spirit of God. O God, we're worshiping in different places today, but we're unified by thy Spirit. Now, as I come to bring this word, I pray that you will use me, O God, to proclaim thy word with effect, and reach out and touch people. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen and amen. The Lord has directed me, my friends, to uh, a passage of scripture that is at the uh, tail end of Matthew chapter 28, and the verses are verses 20, verses 16 to 20. I'll read them. <clears throat> now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. The subject that the Lord has given me to share with us today is no other plan. No other plan. Dr. Charles Swindoll, in his little book, Walk with Jesus, reminds us of Jesus' movements during the 40-day period following his resurrection. During that time, Jesus appeared to hundreds of his disciples scattered across Judea and Galilee. Jesus walked with them. He shared meals with them, taught them lessons, and gave them instructions for the coming days. 
during that 40-day period after his resurrection, Jesus took time to restore, encourage, and rejuvenate his followers after they had suffered the traumatic experience of seeing him tried, accused, abused, beaten, crucified, and killed. Following his crucifixion, many of his followers considered his cause and mission to be a lost cause, and their spirits had been badly bruised. Jesus, therefore, knew that their spirits had to be lifted and rallied for the kingdom-building work that lay ahead. With that in mind, Jesus arranged to meet with and to talk with his followers on two different occasions on mountain meetings. At the first meeting in Galilee, he gave them the plan as recorded in Matthew chapter 26, verse verses 16 to 20. Our text indicates that the disciples had gathered as Jesus had directed them. At some point, Jesus joined them and was received by them, though a few of them, the Bible says, uh, still could not comprehend the fact that he had been killed and actually had come back to life. The Bible says some doubted. But this was the same Jesus. They had no reason to doubt this was the same Jesus. He had come back to life just as he had told them he would do so. He wanted them to know that. In our text, Matthew tells us that Jesus said to his followers at that time, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. This was Jesus' commission to his disciples, and I should add to other disciples who would follow them through the ages. It is important now to emphasize what he told his disciples at the end of the Great Commission. He promised them a lot of help in carrying it out. Note again his promise. And lo, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Now, how exactly was Jesus going to be with them, his followers, in the time to come? The answer is through the power of the Holy Spirit. We see this plainly in the book of Acts, chapter 1. Let me take you there. The occasion was the last day or so that Jesus shared with his disciples. The book of Acts tells us that while staying with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. And what was that promise? The promise of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus had earlier told them, Lo, I am with you always, he was referring to the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told them, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Jesus promised them a great and unlimited power source as they started to take the good news about him into a sometimes unfriendly world. Then, after Jesus told them this, the book of Acts tells us that as the disciples were looking on, Jesus was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. As commanded, the disciples remained in Jerusalem for a while. And on the day of Pentecost, they and other followers of Jesus received the power of the Holy Spirit. We read about this in the book of Acts chapter 2. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came about approximately 120 of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were fired up, energized, empowered for the work of spreading the good news about Jesus. After remaining in Jerusalem a little while longer, the disciples began to disperse 
And the Bible says to go everywhere, spreading the good news about Jesus. Those disciples and other proclaimers of the word after them carried the good news near and far. The Great Commission was spread, abo was spread abroad. It has now been proclaimed through the centuries. And in our day, there are still voices all over spreading the good news that Jesus is Lord. He died, came back to life, and he is Lord, and he is mighty to save. And may I remind us that Jesus' promise, lo, I am with you always, still stands. Jesus has kept his word. We today are living under the promise of always. He'll always be with us. We who belong to the Christian community still have the power, the Holy Spirit power, to witness to how Jesus has come into our hearts and will come into the hearts of any others who believe in him, make them new creatures in Jesus Christ, and make them citizens of, the, of God. As I focus this brief homily, I remind you that the Great Commission was God's plan to evangelize the whole world and to ultimately bring humankind into eternal fellowship with himself. That's why God sent his son Jesus in the first place. You remember that great word given in John 3:16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. As I focus, I, I'll share this with you. I came upon this, and I want to share it with you. There is a legend that states that after Jesus' resurrection and ascension to heaven, he was greeted by the angels when he arrived back in heaven. They were curious about his time on earth and questioned him about his accomplishments here. They asked Jesus, did you found a great movement? Did you lead a great army? How many followers did you have? The old legend says that Jesus responded to these questions by the angels. He said, I generally att attracted great crowds, but I only had 12 disciples and a, few, and a few friends and dedicated followers. And uh, even among them that were my close friends and followers, uh, one denied me and one deserted me. As to the character of those, uh, they were ordinary persons. Several were fishermen. There was a tax collector. Just ordinary, common persons. Another angel chimed in saying, evidently they must have been a very loyal group of followers. Jesus replied, I believe they wanted to be loyal, but in my hour of crisis and greatest need, uh, they did not stand by me. Another angel spoke up and said, Jesus, with all this do you expect that group you left there to carry on your work? Jesus replied, yes, I do. Finally, another angel said, Jesus, if those you left behind to carry on your work fail to do so, what will you do? Jesus replied, I have no other plan. But Jesus, you must have another group in reserve. Somewhere in the event that the group you left on earth fails, Jesus replied, I have no other group. This group is the only one that I'm depending upon because this group is my church. And besides them, I have no other group and I have no other plan. My Christian friends, I want to remind us in closing that we are a part of Jesus' plan. We who hear his word, <clears throat> and believe in him and accept him as our Lord and Savior, we are the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. And we are his plan to go about everywhere we can, on, on every occasion we can, to share with others the fact that we know him. We've come to believe in him as our Lord and Savior. And the one who's going back to heaven and who promised to come again. And we are a part of his plan to evangelize the world and to call people out of darkness into the marvelous light. 
during these days in which we live, during what we may consider perilous times, Jesus wants us to be witnesses for him and let everybody everywhere know that he's at the right hand of God, he's in charge, he promised to send the Holy Spirit, which he did, and we have the power of God, the Spirit of God in us to be what he wants us to be in these difficult times, to be lights in shining places and to lift up the mighty and powerful name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We offer these words with thanksgiving in his great name. Amen and amen. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for this time of sharing. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, O oh God, who has given this word to me and the Holy Spirit who is operating in the lives and in the spirits of those who listen to this word. And I pray, God, that blessings upon everyone and their families. And, O oh God, I ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. My friends in the Lord, uh, we will never underestimate how the Holy Spirit works. We're convinced that as Second Baptist Church and other churches offer this word this way, through the medium that God has given us, that people are hearing the word and they're coming to believe that they knew Jesus, they, they, that they, they do need Jesus Christ in their, Lord, in, their, in their life to be their Savior. And so, as the humble servant of God here at Second Baptist, I... I just invite you uh, to accept Jesus Christ into your life and to believe that he is the son of God and that God sent him into the world to save us from sins, that he died, came back to life, and has opened up, opened up the way for us to have eternal life in his presence. And so I invite you to contact our church if you would like, and when we open up again, you're certainly welcome to come and be a part of this fellowship. Uh, if not, wherever you are, uh, there are churches everywhere. We, we, we just pray that, that you will come to know the Lord and be a part of a church somewhere, be a part of the family of God. And when life's journey is over, as we say, we will, re, we will, receive, we will, we will be received into the eternal presence of God and live forevermore. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen.